those champions we were talking about, the ICA champion, Jason Edgar, brother of Justin, who's also racing here this weekend in the 100 national category. Onto the straight then, and it's two, Gary Cat that leads the race. Last year's Formula A British champion, Lammers has now got up to second place ahead of Alex Sims. So the number 20 car, the 2003 Formula A European champion in second position. Having a storming drive here. A bit of ground to make up already though to Gary Cat. In third place, it's Alex Sims, number 22. Despite a cracking start, number 89, David Gregory is down to fourth place now. On board footage and staring at the exhaust pipes of Danny Crittenden and then moving ahead there of Rob Souster in the number 26 car goes our cameraman Chris Chum having a good race here in the early stages using all of the curves there Alex Sims is dropping away from the top two though just dabbing the car there to make sure the engine doesn't get too hot and seize up plenty of revs on these carts David Gregory still with insight from Alex Sims number 22 the junior ICA champion of last year and also running 12th in the Formula 8 Championship this year. On board again with Chris Chubb up the inside of number 26 there, Rob Souster. Once again, that pair having a terrific ding on They've swapped places a couple of times now. It's allowed Danny Crichton to edge away from them. Back up to the front with uh, Gary Catton there, number two. And he's still got some very close attentions from the Flying Dutchman, Baz Lammers. Through onto the next lap they go, and there's only a couple of tenths between them. Lammers gets his head down. It's becoming the two horse races. They're pulling away uh, from Sims and Gregory in third and fourth positions, respectively. Swooping around the right hander there, carrying plenty of speed. Hard on the brakes now, into the right hander at the hairpin. Quickly back on the gas, and back on board we are with Chris Chubb. And this time he's staring at the back of David Gregory's car. That means he's up inside the top six, Chris Chubb. Great run from tenth place on the grid. Up to fourth position now, we've got Mark Litchfield, who's recently wrapped up the 2004 Formula A British Championship with a couple of races to spare. He's had a slow start to this race, but coming into contention now. The top two are clearing the way with it, though, but third and fourth is still up for grabs. And there's a terrific strike in fifth, sixth and seventh. There's our cameraman, Chris Chubb, number 44. That's what he's seeing at the moment. David Gregory getting close as he gets up towards the first hairpin. Now he's got a good run coming out of the corner, out accelerating the number 89 car, up the inside where the gap is created, and through he goes. Might have got a bit of a tap on the shoulder there on the way out of the corner, but he gets through. The next target for him is going to be number 41, Danny Crutenden, although Crutenden has put a bit of a spurt on at this juncture in the race. But certainly fine driving here from the man that's carrying our onboards. He's giving us some wonderful shots and a real sense of what it's like to be in the mix of a kart race here in the 2004 Cartmaster Championship. Now, suddenly, Baz Lammers has dropped away from Gary Catt, and he's quickly dropped away as well. He's got a problem. He's a bit uh, slippy slightly on the way into the Bruno Ferrari corner. Glances over his shoulder. Has he got a problem? He must have a problem because he waves through. Alex Sims into second place. You wouldn't do that unless you knew you got a problem. Ever the gentleman, Alex Sims, acknowledges the gesture. And Baz Lammers, he touched too many drivers, even though he's got a problem letting everybody else through. He's hanging on to the tail of Sims at this juncture, though. He's got Mark Litchfield breathing down his neck, though. Litchfield trying to get himself up onto the podium here. First place looks very much as though it's going to go the way of Gary Catt. He's been a couple of tenths quicker than everybody in this race, but he's been helped by all the infighting behind him. The second, third and fourth place drivers slowing each other up as they scratch amongst themselves. Now, Lammers looks over his shoulder and again waves through a driver. A small thanks there from Litchfield, but he has to hang onto the steering wheel through this part of the course. It's a really fast right-hander, that. Litchfield now has moved up into the podium paying position from fifth on the grid. Lammers drops down to fourth position, and he's struggling with tyres, it looks like to me. He's really slipping around a couple of the faster corners, and a shame that he's not going to finish on the podium. Danny Crettenden is queuing up behind, but we're on to the final lap now. Gary Pat is being caught here by Alex Sims, but Sims is running out of time, and probably to some extent, Pat has backed off the gas a little bit as he brings it on home towards the chequered flag. The outgoing British champion then is going to have some consolation when he takes the Cartmasters title in about two seconds' time. There he is, Sims takes second position, and Mark Litchfield comes home in third place. A fantastic win there for Gary Carr to eventually solve the challenge from second place Sims. Mark Litchfield third, Baz Lammers fourth, and Danny Cruttenden in fifth. So our top three take a well-deserved lap of honour after what was a fiercely fought final. TGP ran six at the top of the bill.
Balson and Kumchik on the front row of the grid. Wrigley in a superb position there to consolidate his lead. The start on the second row. Galigo back in ninth with everything to fight for. And just John Croson ahead of him in Class B. Over now to Alan Morton for race highlights from the last sit string. And Hubertus Balson made the pole there in his orange arrows. But he'll be a little bit nervous. He's only had warm up to test that new engine as the lights go green. And it's Freddy Kumchik on the left who makes the better start. He comes through in first, Bolson second, Richard Eyre third, Wrigley in the blue Tyrrell in fourth, and the red and white car. That's Steve Hartley who we're on board with now as we go through the right, the left, then another right and left of this infield circuit. Then we'll be heading up onto the bank to back straight. Collins follows through Hartley, then it was Abbott, then Gallego. There's Frank Lyons, a new face. McLaren M26 following up the back. We're onto the straight, on board with Steve Hartley. He's up alongside Wrigley, he's having a go. But Wrigley seems to have the better straight line speed. Well, this is certainly going to be a real battle in Class D. It's started already, and you can be sure Hartley will be having another go at the next opportunity. Oh, someone off already, that's John Croson in his end sign. And we were expecting a great battle in Class B. That'll be a relief for Gallego if he sees it. Coming down the turn, it's Kumshik who leads Balson, who leads Air. But a real battle on for fourth place and fifth place. There's Collins, followed by Abbott. And Abbott with some extra power in the engine this time. So Collins will be expecting him full in his mirrors when they get to the start finish straight. But full in the mirrors at the moment is Steve Hartley and Mike Wrigley's mirrors as they come round the second part of the infield circuit. Kumshik leads the field round, looking comfortable. Bolson, no doubt making sure his engine's feeling good. And coming round to give himself a good run down this start-finish straight, up onto the bank part of the circuit, onto the speedway. Now they'll be piling on the power. Wrigley comes through in fourth, that's Hartley in fifth. Collins in the Lotus, and Abbott lining himself up for a bit of slip streaming down the start-finish straight. He pulls out, on goes the power. At the other end of the straight, Kumshik. Still got Balson under control. And as we said, only eight tenths of a second between these top three in qualifying. And all three cars known to be reliable. So it's going to take some great driving and no doubt a bit of daring before the race is finished for one of these three to come out on top. Up onto the banking to begin lap 10. And Dan Collins in the Lotus there with the best view in the house of this battle. And ready to pounce if there's any mistakes from the two in front. Hartley there glancing to his mirrors. He's looking for where Abbott's going to come from, but there's a back marker in front. That's going to make it tight. Abbott's down the inside. Hartley cuts in, but they've hit. He spins it. Nearly taking out Judith Lyons in the 30s. That was Dan Collins flashing up the safety road. And there's Dave Abbott. I think the car's OK. He's still got the engine running. And this doesn't seem to be any damage. Steve Hartley regaining the track. And that'll be remarkable if they're all back in running. Let's take a look at that one again. And Judith Lyons running to the outside. Steve Hartley cuts in. And there's no room for him and Abbott to fit in there. He squeezes round and by all millimetres avoids taking out the Surtees. Judith Lyons takes to the grass and recovers. And here's the onboard view. He cuts in. A knock at the back wheel. And around he goes. Oh, that was how close they came. And at the end of that lap, Abbott into the pits, followed by Hartley. Abbott was to return, Hartley wasn't. No doubt there'll be a chat in the Mirage Motorsport team pits tonight. And Dan Collins, who'd avoided the accident, avoided the obstacles on the safety runoff road and rejoined the track, then span out of the race at the very next corner. So Nico Bindels found himself in fourth for the rest of the race until a drive shaft problem put him out on a penultimate lap. So everything happening behind them, but no change for the two up front as Freddy Kumschick led home Hubertus Balson in a Swiss 1-2. So the top six confirmed as follows here at the Lausitz ring. But more interesting, the positions of the class winners. With Barrowman winning Class D instead of Wrigley, Galigo's maximum takes him to the top of the leaderboard, with Kumschick taking his second win of the season to lead Class C. Stearns, on his first Paris-Dakar, has now climbed to 10th. Overall, on the Kojima.
Turbo flaming back, Cowan's Mitsubishi charges along Marley's sandy motorway. Conditions are just as difficult. Also appearing on the leaderboard now is his teammate Jean-Jacques Raté in the third of the Coro Toyotas. He's now up to ninth. Is the Opel Manta of Irvin Weber.